feeling good. I'm feeling like really, uh, I'm feeling really ready. I feel like I feel physically ready. I feel emotionally ready. And I feel spiritually ready for this. Um, this has been like such a spiritual journey more than like a physical trial. It's been, uh, it's like been an immersion of like a new self in me and, um, you know, completely have changed everything in my life over the last year. And it's been, this is the catalyst of that change. And this is like that, um, I guess, example and um, potential crossover point of this change. Tell him I'm calling him at 6 a.m. There he is. You're on camera already. Right and early. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you better answer first try. <laughs> So why am I doing a, a full distance Ironman? When I was 19 years old, I wrote a list of the 30 things I want to do before I turned 30. I found that list when I was 29 years old in my garage when I was moving houses. And I had completed 29 of the 30 items on that list. Um, there was one item that I hadn't completed, which was to complete an Ironman. Um, so I searched on the internet. This was uh, in January of 2018. I had six months until I turned 30. So I tried to find the, the, the Ironman that was closest to that. Um, I wasn't able to uh, find a full Ironman that I could complete, so I found a half Ironman that was 13 days before my 30th birthday. So that was Ironman Hawaii, a Hanu half Ironman. So I trained up for six months and I completed that. 13 days later, I turned 30 and I realized that I wanted to create a list of tasks I actually want to complete every year of my life um, up until I turned 40, a new skill per se. Um, I did that Ironman in seven hours and 30 minutes, which was 30 minutes before the cutoff time where they take you off the course which is the slowest time you could possibly do in the race. So I committed to myself when I turned 30 that I'm gonna learn a new skill and the skill was going to be learn how to swim properly, learn how to ride a bike properly, and actually learn how to run. Uh, so I spent the next year and said, I'm gonna do an Ironman, a full Ironman next year. And that's what I've been my journey on for this past year was uh, trying to master how to swim open water, how to bike efficiently and, and build a body that can bike efficiently and then learn how to run properly, not just like walk an entire half marathon, which is what I essentially did um, that in my first race. So it's a skill. It's a skill that I wanted to learn. And 
that's a skill that I'm going to kind of apply today. And it took an entire year. It took over a year actually to get to this point. Today I have to drop off all my uh, gear. This is my run gear bag. This is my bike gear bag. This is my special needs bag on the bike and this is my special needs bag on the run. Um, they give you this at halfway through the bike and they give you this halfway through the run. I'm not really having caffeine until the run just because I'm trying to hold myself off as much as I can. So I'm basically packing these for my run special needs at 13 miles. So basically the last two hours of the race, I'm reserving for my 100 milligrams of caffeine. And then this is something pretty special. This is a ketone ester. Um, I've been pretty fat adapted and utilizing fat and ketones for a lot of my racing. Um, so I have this like five milligram hit that's gonna be like rocket fuel essentially for me. <laughs> for my bike, I'm basically just giving three more bars just to give me the last three hours on the bike. My path running hat, it's my favorite running hat right now. Shout out to Scott Bailey, thank you for sending me this. Here's my suit, I'll be wearing this all day tomorrow. I got my uh, Dr. Patrick's Sports Rehab LA probiotic company seed. Power me through this and it's gonna be my light, nice little costume for tomorrow. Oh, 12 hours of this guy is gonna be interesting. And here's my trusty steed. This is a training cocktail I use. It's just like, just all beet juice, all this stuff. I'm gonna have one Basically, right before my bike, and I'm gonna have one right before my run, so I gotta put these in there. We are headed to drop off our bike in transition one and basically get everything set up early in the day so I can be off my feet and just relax and meditate for the next four hours <laughs> and eat some really good food. Yeah. I'm pretty stressed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not stressed. Let me, let me, I'm nervous. I am legitimately nervous um, because number one, I have never ran a marathon in my entire life. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I've never biked this long before, distance wise. I've biked for like way longer hours. I haven't biked this amount of distance before. Um, number three, it's my first full Ironman, so obviously there's a bit of a nervous kind of itch and tick to do that. Um, so anytime there's a new experience that I've never had before, I'm going to be very like, you know what I mean? But I'm also embracing the moment because I'll never feel this again. I, there's a taste in life, like at least that I feel is like that taste when you do something that you've never done before is so beautiful. It's such a beautiful taste, and like that's like a big thing I'm like I'm trying to do more of is like I want every experience like to be super new and exciting, um, and this this moment, which is pretty profound, will never happen again. I'll never be this nervous about doing an Ironman again because once you complete one, you're just like oh I know what that's like. I've experienced that moment before. It's never the same as the first time. So there's also moments that I'm cherishing this feeling. Um, I'm cherishing like the first time of, of doing something, you know? There's, there's a, there's like a beauty to it, per se. Entrepreneur, comme toute, euh, toute, euh, toute personne qui a rencontré des obstacles dans la vie et qui fait des efforts pour, euh, 
arriver à, à, voilà, arriver à atteindre des étapes différentes, euh, successives, bah, Justin s'est fixé cet objectif-là, après d'autres objectifs qu'il a réussi d'ailleurs, ça lui a donné confiance. Donc pour moi, demain, euh, en espérant qu'il fasse ça en 12 heures, euh, mais même s'il va au-delà, ça n'a aucune importance. Le, le principal, c'est qu'il participe à, à cet événement qui s'est fixé dans sa tête, cet objectif. Et surtout, c'est... Euh, le plus important, c'est ce qui s'est passé avant, c'est cette année d'entraînement en réalité. Ce n'est pas demain. Demain, c'est l'aboutissement de quelque chose, c'est le jour J. Mais c'est tous ces mois, tous ces jours, toutes ces heures d'entraînement, de sérieux, euh, tous ces réveils à 4 heures du matin pour être euh, dans l'océan, près de Santa Monica, près de Malibu, là où il est, euh, pour s'entraîner euh, avec les, les mecs de sa bande. Euh, avec autant d'énergie, autant de motivation, autant de croyance, euh, voilà. Donc demain, il grandit, il grandit. Mais il a déjà démarré à grandir euh, depuis le début de ses entraînements. Well, I mean, it's, he's surprising me all the time. This is not the first time that, you know, I got that type of, you know, uh, things that he wants to do. But, you know, really, it's challenging, you know, it's just that... Uh, It's amazing and, you know, just be proud. That's it, you know, more he achieved, more prouder than me and my wife's are. Well, I mean, it's just that when somebody is with you for that long, 30 plus, uh, you know, you don't judge him at the very end of it. It's just that you judge this kid from the two years old to, you know what I'm saying? It's for me, like when he graduated from Cali Paul, He was a speaker, you know, for the 5,000 people, head of the class and everything else. So I put that in the same category of, you know what I'm saying, Iron Man and his business and all. It, it's, it's all positive, you know. So tomorrow if he tells me I'm going to go to moon, I say, oh, go for it, I think you're going to make it. <laughs> I'm not sure about, it, you know, like a physical side of it, like he's going to get to a sport or anything else, that's, I don't know. But the way I see it, as long as he check mark the stuff that he wants to do, so the next one, no matter what that is, you know, it could be whatever, I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, it doesn't have to maybe be a sport. Maybe he wants to write a book. Maybe he wants to make a movie. It, it's, it's all mindset that he's ready for it. He's one of those guys that He put his mouth, <laughs> you know, his money where his mouth is, and just that, uh, you know, do it. So where do I want to get out of this event? Where do I want to stand? Um, rediscovering my spiritual self and um, finding a person that has been lost for a very long time. Uh, it's a person that's been suppressed. It was a person that was covered up with the covered up with the quote unquote concept of success it was a person that was scared I was a person that was built in fear and essentially this is a capstone of me breaking through all those things in my life that I've essentially tried to cover up for the past 10 years with um, <laughs> terrible experiences with treating people like shit with which being an asshole with not being you know coming from a place of love and i am i'm committed to ending that version of that person and i'm going to leave that person on this course tomorrow
I truly had nothing left, physically, mentally, or emotionally after the end of this race. Like, I mean, you were with me basically crossing, and I couldn't even walk. Like, that lady, that little lady helped me, like, get to a seat, and I just sat down, and I'm like, oh my god. <clears throat> I'm, I'm still not, like, 100, like, I'm still a little loopy, to be honest with you. Like, it doesn't feel, I, like, I slept a little bit last night, but not, like, a full night of rest. Um, I think my body's still in shock of like what I just did, um, and I'm still a little bit in shock. So like I know for sure, I left every ounce of anything I had on that field. It didn't feel real. Um, it 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 felt like a little bit of a dream. I think these last 24 hours have felt a little bit dreamlike. Um, you know when a dream is so real and you think you're about to wake up. But then it's just your life. That's kind of what my last 24 hours have felt. Really, like, like, like 18 miles in when I started, you know, I'm like 10, 10 hours into the race and a little bit longer than that. And, you know, I'm beginning to get dizzy and seeing dots and like, you know, like the caffeine's hitting hard and the sugar's through the roof. And you're just like, what do you, what do you, where are you? You get a little bit delusional. Like I saw stuff in the forest for sure at some point yesterday. Um, I am a true believer in like, I think every person should embark in a physical activity that pushes their body to an extreme. Um, because you, you see a part of yourself that you never would see otherwise. I don't care what anyone says about other ways of finding enlightenment or all that like when you push your physical avatar to a level beyond comprehension there's something that happens with your head I don't know what it is I don't know the scientific behind it but it's something profound and I'm still like I'm still dreaming a little bit first of all there's like zero fear on anything at this point like uh, like a year ago, I'd be like, fuck, how could I ever do an Ironman, you know? And now after training for a year and doing it, and honestly, like, it was bad, but it wasn't like, there was no part that I was like, I'm going to quit. Zero. There was like zero thought of that actually happening. I, I almost want to figure out, well, what's the race that's going to make me want to quit? 
like what's something I could do that's gonna be like fuck, dude. Like halfway done, I'm like, I'm there's no way I can. Like, how am I gonna do this, right? Like, there was there was no part of yesterday that I felt that I could not complete it. It could have taken longer, but there's no like after the bike, you saw like I felt I was 100 percent seven hours into the race. One even after the half marathon, I was 100 percent. I was like, dude, I'm good. Like I'm chilling. I'm like I'll be back in two hours. Like see you soon. Obviously, that's not what happened, but um, the point is, like, I'm really interested in now thinking what's next, um, but I got to take some time to figure that out. I got to rest. I'm not, um, um, but man, I'm just, I'm so blessed. I like, I want to thank so many people. I, I want to thank, um, I want to thank all my teachers, first and foremost. I want to thank my coaches. I want to thank Jim Lubinsky. I want to thank Jerry Rodriguez. I want to thank Patrick, my cousin, who is helping with all my rehab, getting through everything. I want to thank my nutritionist, Dr. Goglia. I want to thank my spiritual teacher, Lynn. I want to thank everyone at Tower 26. I want to thank Ricardo. I want to thank Chase. I want to thank David. I want to thank John, I want to thank Brian, I want to thank Christoph, Christelle. Man, just so many people that have been just inspirational. Audra and Michael. Um, man, just like so many people that have just been so inspirational to helping me become a better athlete. And, you know, being open to, uh, like, like knowing this fat, this fat guy, this fat guy that sold the company could become an Iron Man and not, you know, it was like, it's only 18 months ago, like, it wasn't a, this is not a super long time that I like barely could move and I could barely run a mile and, you know, so it's just been, it's been really inspirational to have like such a great team around me and, you know, my family, my dad, my mom, my brother, my cousin and his family for being here and, you know, supporting me through this, like, I just, I can't thank the world enough um, for like putting me in this place, like, it's like your surroundings that help create your environment in so many ways. Like it's not just predicated on me, obviously, like I had to decide to get up in the morning and go do it, but I have like such an incredible team around me to support that mission um, that it's just like, it's amazing. So, yeah, I'm just, I feel so blessed. Like, like that's what's something that was like really going through my mind. Like, like my, my new friend, Matt, uh, sent me this letter I was sharing with you yesterday and I thought about that letter a lot um, so oh yeah and Matt because Matt brought us together yeah so I gotta thank Matt and Amar and the Esther guys they uh they made this happen which I think was made it really special don't wait you know don't wait to do something that's outside your comfort zone there's an ounce of your ability to complete something or something that's on your mind or something you want to do, like, don't wait. You don't know what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow actually doesn't exist, right? Like, like if you truly think, like, something's in your path, just try it. Do it. Suffer. Grow. Grow through suffering, you know? Humans have... We've created this existence that allows things to be very easy for us. Like, so easy. Everything in life is so fucking easy. Like, you want food, you go to the store. Like, it's not, it's not as hard as it was a hundred years ago to live. If you're contemplated with a challenge that pushes you beyond your comfort zone, beyond what is easy, what is not, you know, simple, you have to go down that road for growth. You cannot sit back and just experience life in this passive way. Um, we are here to live. Um, we are here to, yes, have fun, but we're also here to suffer in some ways. Uh, because I think through that suffering is what our spiritual growth comes um, through that learning. Maybe I'm saying suffering in a wrong way, but the point is like, shit being easy does not help us grow. Easy does not make you grow. Uh, your body grows through stress. It grows through challenges. So if there's moments that allow you to be challenged, take those moments and run with them. If you have the ability to, to grow through pain, grow through that pain, life's way too easy to just sit back.